Hello and welcome back to 2K14 Universe. It's me, it's Jitch, introducing you to another episode of SmackDown. Two days away from Money in the Bank and very oddly kicking off SmackDown with a man that would normally close out SmackDown and his tag team partner. their second defense since winning the World Tag Team Championship, and as I mentioned last week, we've been waiting for Jericho to invoke their rematch clause, but with them not doing so, new contenders have been found in the meantime, and uh, perhaps through a miracle, perhaps through some kind of twist of misfortune, it depends on which way you really want to look at it, R-Truth and Zack Ryder won a contenders match against Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara last week, and I mentioned last week, interestingly, Ray looked genuinely disappointed for the first time in Sin Cara when Sin Cara took that pinfall. Uh, this season, Sin Cara has not won a single match. Ray has lost about eight, and he's only won one. So, I'm hoping the tensions that are brewing between those are nothing too serious. We have, SmackDown can't afford to lose tag teams right now. Edge and Christian aren't teaming up, and Jericho aren't really teaming up, and NWO Blue are not exactly hitting their stride right now, and on top of that, uh, you know, R-Truth and Zack Ryder, I mean, best of luck to them tonight, but I, I, what do you think the percent chance of winning is? Maybe we should ask Scott Steiner. I don't think it's very high, though. <clears throat> yeah, Brothers Destruction are pretty much untouchable right now as tag team champions. Could be wrong. Upsets happen. I think, honestly, R-Truth and Zack Ryder have a better chance of Kane or The Undertaker turning their back on their partner, walking out on them, remembering the history that those two had with each other, and going their separate ways once again, than they do of just beating these guys tonight as is. I don't want to talk down the opposition here tonight. Zack Ryder and R-Truth, I think they're two very gifted people. I just think that... Uh, Undertaker and Kane, this is a combination that very much kind of monopolizes those tag team championships. I don't I don't know that there's anyone quite on that level. You know it. And his tag team partners. From Long Island, New York, weighing in at 214 pounds, Zack Ryder. Of course, though, uh, Zack Ryder is a four-time cruiserweight champion, and no stranger to tag team championship gold. He is a former WWE tag team champion. Representing the old group, the Misfits. And uh, as I've mentioned many times before, our truth seems to think that this guy is the Miz. <clears throat> and he wants to get back the World Tag Team Championships. We'll see if they can do that tonight, I guess. Well, it looks like we're actually going to get the title introduction. We don't normally get it, so like I have to stop talking. If you look at NXT this week, uh, it didn't happen. The tag title matches are always a little strange for that. There they are, the World Tag Team Championship, second ever title defense for the Brothers Destruction. What a team. So here we go, Undertaker and R-Truth starting things off, and Undertaker with that uh, kind of signature flurry of strikes of his. You know, known very much for just the speed this guy is able to uh, throw each jab with. And R-Truth, he's not, he's not backing down. I mean, I guess, honestly, he's unstable enough that this is a, a good guy to start this match off with. R-Truth doesn't seem to ever realize who he's in the ring with, and I guess uh, he's kind of changed his mind at one sight of Kane. R-Truth uh, interrupting that move from Kane. Uh, it's just one way to keep things in your, in your favor a little bit. Uh, not, not really, though, <laughs> honestly. Ryder going for a drop kick, and that was a, a huge mistake as he slams his head down onto the mat. Like we've got that crazy tag team main event. I, I, I don't know what to even think about it. Randy Orton and Triple H have been at each other's throats, but here tonight they're going to be made to team up with each other to face off against Damian Sano and Cena, two people I don't think would ever work on the same team without this uh, stipulation here tonight. 
It's got a six-man battle royal featuring all six participants in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Uh, this Sunday, it's going to be a real great match and a European Championship Open Challenge. This is an absolutely packed episode of SmackDown. Sidewalk Slam by Kane. And it looks like he's not even going to waste time going for the choke slam on Zack Ryder. Our truth broke it up, though. Ryder did not kick out. That was uh, our truth breaking up a trip sound. I can't believe everything that's transpired thus far. It's, it's been, been so, so physical. Zack Ryder has got Kane up on the top. We're feeling very ambitious. I mean, I guess the thing about uh, Ryder and Truth here tonight is they got they got nothing to lose in this match. They got a lot to try and prove against two former world heavyweight champions. And they've got nothing to lose. Tag made to The Undertaker. And it looks like the dead man isn't wasting any time upon getting in the ring. Zack Ryder scooped up for a tombstone pile driver. Drop down. I think Kane's taking care of our truth. Ref, look in the ring. Look in the ring. Cover here on Ryder. And Ref really screwed up that moment there and allowed our truth to to break that one up. Credit I do. <clears throat> that wasn't a survival from Zack Ryder, unfortunately. That was our truth keeping him in this, and I don't, I don't know how much Zack Ryder really appreciates having to continue to uh, suffer the onslaught of the Undertaker. There's a humongous choke slam. And Undertaker now gonna lock in Hell's Gate on Zack Cradle. Oh, that's just brutal. That is just unnecessary from the Undertaker. And there you go. Well, I'd say that was a pretty decent effort from Zack Ryder. He lasted longer than I was expecting. Probably no thanks to our truth, admittedly. Love this animation. Really feels like Undertaker and Kane right now. <laughs> this is so characteristic of them. The bros of destruction. Well, Undertaker and Kane are victorious. They are still your world tag team champions. I really don't know what it's going to take to end this reign of these two. I feel like this is one we are in for the long, long haul for. You know, I mean, maybe Jericho could do it. Big Show is a very impressive superstar, and Jericho's got some great wits about him. But right now, Jericho's focused on money in the bank, and that could pay off in the near future as SmackDown continues. Here's a guy with a very interesting situation. Bret Hart has said that win or lose the Intercontinental Championship this Sunday, he's winning in his eyes because if he wins back the Intercontinental Championship, he gets to hold the most prestigious championship in the history of this series. But if Bret Hart loses, this man has one of the best track records, including a victory over Damian Sandow the current World Heavyweight Champion. So Bret Hart says that uh, should he lose here tonight, it's not over for him. It's bigger. It's, I mean, if, should he lose this Sunday? It's not over for him. It's bigger. It's better, potentially, because this man will no doubt be in line for the World Heavyweight Championship just in time to headline SummerSlam. He's not wrong. He's really, really not wrong. This guy is uh, definitely a front runner for the Intercontinental, I mean, for the World of Champion, Championship and Intercontinental Championship. He's, uh, I believe, only ever lost one match this series. As here comes Christian's hand-picked opponent for Bret Hart. An interesting choice. Yeah, this is definitely an interesting choice. This was uh, Rick Rude's debut match. Rick Rude has been... <clears throat> aching to get his hands on the Intercontinental Championship. I don't know if Christian is just screwing with Rick Rude 
by handpicking him, you know, as the current Intercontinental Champion, or if uh, perhaps he knows, you know, the history between these two, the fact that Bret Hart stood this guy up in his debut match <clears throat> on SmackDown. But uh, this 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 could be a huge opportunity for Rick Rude. This is a privilege to have been picked by Christian for this match, no doubt. Pretty much anyone and everyone knows about the history between these two, and it goes deep beyond uh, this universe. You know, there is there is some history, I believe, between these two. Uh, Bret Hart, Rick Rude, two living legends in the wrestling world. Sorry to uh, Daniel Bryan and Bryce Walker. But uh, they, they exist here on SmackDown too. <laughs> yeah, Brett has uh, only lost one match this season, believe it or not. He's 8-1, and one, I think, is his current record. And uh, his only loss, uh, he didn't lose. That was that triple threat match for the Intercontinental Championship in which Christian pinned Edge after Edge laid down for Christian. That had nothing to do with Bret Hart actually losing. It's just that it wasn't a win and he was involved in the match. So it does count as a loss. But the, the guy hasn't actually been defeated this season. As I say, he's got a victory over the World Heavyweight Champion, Damien Sandow. So my question to you, the viewer, is do you agree? Do you think that Bret Hart has the right to the World Heavyweight Championship once Money in the Bank is over? Do you think he should be the man to challenge for the big gold belt at SummerSlam? Obviously, assuming he doesn't win back the Intercontinental Championship. Obviously, if you're holding a championship, you're not eligible for any other championship. That's a new ruling we've actually got to the point now where you are, even if you're a tag champion or a tertiary champion, like the Cruiserweight Championship or the European title, you are not eligible for any other title whilst you are holding that championship. You are removed from the rankings of that championship entirely. So... Uh, for example, Christian, he can't go anywhere near those World Tag Team titles right now because he is holding the Intercontinental Championship. So, uh, yeah, as I said before, his uh, team with Edge is currently on hold. Which is a real shame because that is uh, undoubtedly one of the best tag teams we've ever seen. And, you know, the Brothers of Destruction... Oh, big elbow by Bret Hart. The Brothers of Destruction uh, definitely feel like a good challenge for them. A big pile driver by Brett. My God, Rick Rude getting dominated here. Brett with a cover. Oh, I thought he was about to make light work of Rick Rude. And there you see a sick dick break. <clears throat> I'll tell you, Rick Rude is someone who hasn't exactly had the best success. His last match was... Uh, just last Saturday on Superstars, he lost the Ultimate Warrior to kick off the show. A man that you could say he's a little fixated with, based on his uh, the back of his tights. Uh, Rick Rude has actually said it's synonymous with his debut match here on SmackDown. He will continue to wear pink and black going forward as well. So this man, he really likes to, I guess, pay homage to the, to the, the road he has paved. I hate to see how he's going to look by the end of the season, if he manages to achieve anything else. Put him in a body bag. Rick Rude having a hard time getting into this, but I tell you, Bret Hart, he is uh he, he is a he is a top tier superstar. And oh a poke to the eye there by Rick Rude. <clears throat> so you can call that a bit of a rude awakening. And speaking of which, Rick Rude catching Bret Hart into exactly that, the rude awakening. Hart laid out a star formation in there. That's, that's not a good sign when they lay like that. Bret Hart laid out cover attempt here by Rick Rude. One. Just a one count. And Bret Hart with a huge clothesline takes down Rick Rude. Center of the ring. Perfectly positioned and primed. There it is. The sharpshooter. Rick Rude really fighting with everything he's got. Is he going to be able to make it to those ropes? Will Brett just decide to release them? Perhaps he can reverse out of it? No. Rick Rude makes it to the ropes. The question now is, what condition is Rick Rude in? He may have survived the sharpshooter, but that does his damage on you. One of the most feared submission holds in the industry. 
and no one does it better. No offense to Natalia or The Rock, but nobody does it better than Bret Hart. Submission hold here, hand on the ropes. Where with all of Bret Hart always perfectly on display. <clears throat> Breaking by Rick Rude. This is a huge opportunity for Rick Rude to beat one of the top stars on SmackDown in terms of wins and losses, at least. Bret Hart now. Quick schoolboy here. Into the cover. It's over. Just like that. You can never predict a roll up. A roll up. I don't know why I said it like that. You can never predict one. Here is your winner. Well, congratulations to Bret Hart on this victory. Well deserved, very impressive, perhaps the biggest in his life. I don't know about that, but you know, <clears throat> lose my voice. I've got a big recording day ahead of me today. I'm hoping to get the uh, special event Money in the Bank recorded today as well, because I really, really need to know who's going to be the Money in the Bank holders going forward. Uh, so, losing my voice right now is uh, scary, but uh, with that, I will uh, say it is time to move on to the next match. So, uh, up next, it is time for the six-man battle royal, I believe. The Money in the Bank preview match is next. Well, here we go. <clears throat> A little preview of the Money in the Bank ladder match coming your way. The following six-man contest is an elimination match. Making his way to the ring from the United Kingdom, Robert Scorpio. Remember when Robert Scorpio was bald? Yeah, I've been slowly putting his hair back. <laughs> I know I'm bald in real life, but you know what? He's just a fucking character. It's a loose association, all right? So Robert Scorpio on first in this six-man battle royal. Definitely one of the guys with the least momentum heading into Money in the Bank, but momentum doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot when it comes to a Money in the Bank ladder match. This match here tonight is going to be interesting in the sense of, like, we're going to see who would win if it was pinfall submission, but uh, this doesn't necessarily say who's going to win this Sunday because it's all about obtaining the briefcase hung high above the ring, and that could be any man when given the right opportunity, but I'll tell you what, here's a guy who lives for the word opportunity. <clears throat> Literally call him the ultimate opportunist. We have yet to see that, but the money in the bank briefcase could be exactly what creates that opportunity for Edge. It is something that he claims has haunted him. For a long time, his only World Heavyweight Championship reign came to an end because of a Money in the Bank cash-in. Ryback going into this Sunday, this is a huge opportunity. The man has not held a championship since coming to SmackDown upon the closure of ECW. We don't know what this guy is capable of since coming to SmackDown. We haven't really seen a whole lot of him in that regard. He's kind of just been going through the motions, I think, waiting for that, that big opportunity to kind of strike. And that could be exactly what money in the bank ends up being for Ryback. I don't know why we're suddenly getting a really long loading screen. Uh, okay, there you go. <laughs> it took a while. <clears throat> Here's the man that had a fantastic match with Edge last week on SmackDown. But he was victorious. He's definitely going into this uh, a little more successful than the first three coming out here tonight. Robert Scorpio is saying not the best track record in general. Uh, Edge has had a, quite a lot of losses this season, and Ryback's the same, actually. He's kind of fallen off from that undefeated streak, but Jericho... 
He's always stayed really fairly significant. <clears throat> That's right, you idiots. He is from uh, Winnipeg. Don't you forget it. I'd love to like, ima like imagine someone not knowing that reference and being like, why the fuck did he just call me an idiot? <laughs> what did I do? I'm watching his video. In case you are offended, in case you're confused, I'm from Winnipeg, you idiot, is a classic Chris Jericho quote to a heckler in a crowd once. I'm not a big lover of Jericho these days, but, you know, he was, he was really something once upon a time. And uh, we'll see if here tonight, Chris Jericho can build even more momentum. You know, a lot of people overshadow Jericho for his tag team part of the Big Show, because Big Show has one of the best win-loss records out there. But Jericho himself, you know, he's got wits, he's, he's pretty great, and we haven't actually seen him involved with the World Championship yet. That would be pretty great. I genuinely think so. Speaking of people who haven't really had an opportunity at the World Championship, I speak a lot about this because it's, it, to me, it's very significant to this guy's story going into this matchup. Uh, CM Punk uh, <clears throat> was once the top contender for the World Heavyweight Championship. This guy once was very heavily involved in a heated rivalry with Randy Orton. And uh, I'm sure he has not forgotten about it. I'm sh <clears throat> my god. No, I can't be losing my voice this bad on SmackDown. I'm trying to do SmackDown Superstars and Money in the Bank play. I can't lose my voice in, like, the third match of SmackDown. I just can't. He calls himself the best in the world, but can he back it up tonight? Can he back it up this Sunday? Can he back it up? Back it up. Back it up. Just saying stuff now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, there is one more participant left to come into this match, and it is the man with the most momentum headed into this battle royal, and the only former Money in the Bank winner in this match. There's a lot of things on Sheamus' side heading into Money in the Bank, and a lot of it is his past success. You cannot deny the significance of Sheamus in the upcoming Money in the Bank ladder match. He's definitely got to be an odds-on favorite. As I said, he's already experienced Money in the Bank victory in the past. Cashed in the briefcase when Jack Swagger and went on to have the longest World of a Championship reign, a record that has still not been broken to this day. And that was two years ago. So here we go. This is, uh, I, I think I wrongly announced this initially by saying it was a uh, six-man over-the-top rope. That's not true. This is a six-man pinfall and submission battle royal. I wanted to set this one apart from the NXT battle royal earlier in the week. So this one is uh, now going to be a far more decisive form of battle royal, to be fair. I think that these pinfall submission battle royals are a very big deal. You kind of get to see, like... Obviously, if the Money in the Bank ladder match was of the elimination format, uh, instead of, you know, first guy to grab it, who would end up being the one to take down, take, take down, <laughs> to take down the briefcase? Who, who would be the first one to get eliminated from that kind of a matchup? Take down. <laughs> I'm going to have to go a little easy on the commentary, though, because I, I really, really want to uh, do Money in the Bank. I need to be able to, like, start preparing for, like, what I'm going to do with the Money in the Bank winners. And obviously, I've got to start being able to think of, like, SummerSlam plans and stuff, because that's a big deal. That's a big, big show. Um, so, like, I, I just need, I need to be done with the Money in the Bank build. Not to say that, like, I don't care for it, and I'm not going to, like, try and yada, yada, yada. But like, <clears throat> you know, I do need to, to think 
Think about the future. Battle of Smiths now. I'm really curious to find out who the first one eliminated is. I think a lot of people would expect it to be uh, Robert Scorpio. <laughs> I'll be honest, he's definitely my my pick. I do uh, I do appreciate how much people believe in him. I just I think he's still just a little bit too much of a newbie. I think he's still got a long way to go. I think if he was to um, win the Money in the Bank briefcase by some miracle, uh, he would he would have to really wait his time to cash that in. Well, Seamus and CM Punk really going at it. It's not a surprise that CM Punk wants that retribution after losing the Seamus last week. We know how much these these losses mean to CM Punk. Edge and Jericho for that same reason, I'd imagine. That obviously leaves Ryback and Scorpio to kind of deal with each other. I'll tell you, that's not a very favorable guy for Scorpio to be facing off against. Walls of Jericho applied here on Edge. Imagine if Edge was to tap out right here to be the first guy thrown out. It's possible, but no. Attempt here by Edge. Let's roll up. Jericho turning things around. CM Punk, by the way, got Sheamus up for a go to sleep. Got him. You don't want to pin once there's another pin going off, otherwise they'll have to terminate the pin. Oh, no, never mind. Uh, the referee just holding off on even acknowledging that one. There you go. Finally, cover on Sheamus. And the go to sleep knocks the man with the most momentum out of the match first. That's retribution for CM Punk in a big way. Cover attempt from right back. I didn't see if he... Hit anything big before attempting that, to be honest. Yeah, another cover attempt. More cover attempts. Ooh, it's getting close now. I think we're. I think this is the uh, the elimination section, maybe. It's been so physical. Come on, Scorpio! Jesus fuck, did he really just pin right back? Holy hell. Heel kick there by CM Punk. Jericho and Edge. Really looking to repeat history. I mean, God, I'll tell you, they had such a good match last week. I, I loved it. I loved that match last week. Cover attempt on Jericho. Oh, I mean on Edge from Jericho. By Jericho. That's the word you were looking for. Scorpio calling for the white tiger bomb on CM Punk. He's got those arms hooked. Oh, there it is. Drags him down into the cover. He's got him folded over. Oh my god, imagine if Scorpio got two eliminations. That'd be nuts. He's really, uh, really trying to make a name for himself tonight. Gotta respect it. I said Scorpio's definitely been walking into a lot of his matches the underdog. Punk kipping up. Uh, Jericho and Edge have really got it out for each other. Kicks the midsection there by CM Punk. Scorpio heading into the ropes. He's running. He's running. And Jericho. <laughs> CM Punk just completely missed. And Jer Oh, almost. <clears throat> Scorpio now. Looking to choke out CM Punk. Could this be? Will it be? CM Punk is struggling. He's fighting for his life in there. And, oh, still is. And Jericho forcing a submission from Edge with the walls of Jericho. Another victory of Edge and Jericho and Scorpio working together. Oh, that's an interesting pairing. Down goes CM Punk. Oh, Scorpio. Nice reversal into a cover here. Is this going to be the finishing point for Punk? He's out. Well, it comes down to these two. Oh, code breaker. That is not, not quite the first move you want to be hit by Jericho with. And there you go. Chris Jericho with a bit of momentum. I'll tell you what, Scorpio actually looked pretty good in that match, though. Some very impressive eliminations. 
Same for Jericho. Really went toe to toe with Edge. And with his wits, just drove those knees into the face of Scorpio right away. And that is a big win for uh, Chris Jericho ahead of Money in the Bank. This guy now walks into the ladder match with the most momentum. A victory over all five of his opponents in just two days time. It's a very different match, but I'll tell you what, when it comes to the ladder match, one of the main things I keep saying is it's all about who's the smartest. It's all about who's able to pick their time and climb that ladder when no one suspects it and bring down that briefcase. And if there's one guy who relies on his wits to get his way while well, you're looking at him. Well, here we go, it is open challenge time for the world's strongest man. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the European Championship. Making his way to the ring from Silsby, Texas, weighing 418 pounds, he is the European Champion, the world's strongest man, Mark Henry. Mark Henry was told that uh, with uh, Money in the Bank just around the corner, the European Championship was due a defense. Uh, and Henry said, well, I already beat JBL, but I'll tell you what, I don't give a damn. I don't care who comes out and faces me. I will take on anyone. I just destroyed the longest reigning W Champion in history. No one has taken this title off of me. So Mark Henry, confident tonight, is taking that open challenge. And also, I mean, I'm curious to find out who's going to accept. What? Oh, this could be a lot of people. It could be someone from Raw, for all we know, after what happened on Raw this week. Oh. Introducing the challenger. Representing the new world order. From Robbinsdale, Minnesota. Weighing 257 pounds. Kurt This is what I call a short-sighted decision. At its finest. Kurt Hennig is, uh... I think he's making a mistake here tonight. This guy has heard that he could get his first title shot since debuting, and he's gone, yeah, yeah, I'll take that. Why not? I'll just walk on out there and I'll take it. And his first singles title shot. I believe him and Six have had a shot at the tag titles. I could be wrong, but I think they did. I think that's Undertaker and Kane's first defense. But, um, this is honestly, respectfully to Hennig, this is a mistake. I hope you realize what you've signed up for. I know you're a very confident man. You, you're you gonna regret this. I will I will say that with full-blown confidence. And look, everybody, it's John... Why is he wearing yellow shorts? Everybody, it's John Cena. He'll be in our main event up next. <laughs> Tonight's special guest is John Cena. Well, Henning tried to grab him in a headlock, and immediately you notice Mark uh, Henry took immediate control of this matchup. Slamming down on uh, Kurt Hennig. Uh, I know there's been a lot of history between John Cena and Mark Henry, but I think that's very much behind them now. I think that was resolved a while ago, so I hope that we're not getting round seven of that. <laughs> Still to come, as I said before, our main event tag team match. Randy Orton and Triple H against John Cena and the World Heavyweight Champion Damian Sandow. This comes just before Triple H and Orton will challenge Sandow for the World Heavyweight title in a triple threat this Sunday at Money in the Bank. That side suplex there by Mark Henry takes down Kurt Hennig. And Henry... Dissing, dishing, not dissing, out punishment immediately here. Oh, God. Wait a minute, where's... No, 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 Oh, God. Mark Henry dragging a lifeless Hennig to the center of the ring. Oh, my God. World's strongest slam. I tell you, after the statement the NWO made on Monday, they are not going to be pleased with this humiliation. Kurt Hennig came out here feeling extra confident for whatever reason. 
and got decimated. And there's JBL. He is just not going to let this one die. JBL striking down the European champion after a successful defense. And it looks like these two are far from finished with each other. What a shot. Oh god, I just realized how long it takes them to introduce him. <laughs> nice. Uh, Triple H out first in this tag team main event here tonight. And you know this is a man who is feeling very reluctant about his pairing tonight with Randy Orton. And you can't blame the guy one thing that I think has got to be playing through the mind of Randy Orton Triple H and Damian Sandow is uh, obviously there is the possibility that uh, whoever wins the money in the bank briefcase they could join that match they could cash in on the winner immediately after that match they can have such a huge impact on the World Heavyweight Championship at any given moment going forward. We have been told that the one... Okay, he's lost his abs again. I don't know what's one second he's like absolutely shredded. And the next second he's got a smooth tummy. What's up with that? It's really weird. Not that he's like not built. It's just... This looks like real Triple H body. And then occasionally the game will be like... He has the biggest abs on earth. You look at last week's episode, though. I'm sure he was he was built insanely, and it was the same attire I used this week. I don't actually understand what's up with that. And their opponents first. From West Newbury, Massachusetts, weighing 240 pounds, John Cena. You know, as much as I'm curious about the team of Triple H and Randy Orton, it's this team I'm really curious about. I don't know how these two are going to coexist. I know, I don't believe Cena and Sandow have ever really crossed paths with each other. But, um, I, I just can't see them seeing eye to eye. And, of course, for Cena, this is a strange match because, yeah, he came back last week, you know. He, he got involved in the main event. He kind of ended up costing Triple H the match. And, uh, obviously getting at Randy Orton after Randy Orton took him out. So, uh, you know, I can understand why Cena got involved, but does this, does he want to associate with this guy? I don't think so. We took a poll on an imaginary website that doesn't exist and 62% of people voted that Randy Orton will leave with the World Heavyweight Championship at Money in the Bank. Damian Sandow and measly 4%, 4% believe that this man will leave with the World Heavyweight Championship this Sunday. That is quite the odds against Damian Sandow in this poll that is very real. And here comes Randy again. Here he comes and Cena can't wait. He can't wait. He's charging to the outside. Attacking Randy Orton. Randy Orton and Cena, I believe they are the, the legal men starting this match off. But they're going to be starting on the outside of the ring, it seems. And it's no surprise that the bad blood has been brewing between these two. Randy Orton had no reason to attack John Cena. I understand Randy Orton setting his sights on Damian Sandow in the World Heavyweight Championship when he crashed that match that started all of this. But he had no business going for John Cena. Cena had an opportunity to defeat Damian Sandow in non-title action like a month ago. 
and it was all because of Randy Orton that he never got that opportunity and we haven't seen Cena in action since he's not been on the injured list just simply got pushed to the back so that Randy Orton and Triple H could kind of take over and uh, you know deal with their whole situation that's been going on between them and how Sandow's just kind of been in the middle of this he swung wild with that one Four percent believe in Damian Sandow going into this Sunday, and you know what? Those odds, they may end up playing in the favor of Damian Sandow. He may feed off of that. I don't know. I don't really understand Damian Sandow's psyche on any given day. Oh boy! I got a mixed crowd reaction here tonight. I don't think I've, this crowd reaction sounds really strange. I don't think I've ever heard that before in this game. I probably have. It just that sounded really unusual. Cena connected with every single one of those classic Cena moves that would then lead to the whoa. <laughs> Five knuckle shuffle, but he went nope, not today. A hurricane runner was what Cena wanted to do instead, and Triple H just power bombed him for his troubles. Triple H tags Randy Orton in. You know, Triple H and Randy Orton, if they were to form an alliance. That would be, I think, honestly, one of the most dangerous combinations on SmackDown since the Brothers of Destruction. Cena shoving Orton away there. It seems like Cena's uh, kind of hurt. It seems like he's got a little bit of a hunt. Know, maybe he hurt himself uh, attacking Randy Orton on the outside earlier on or what went down there. But yeah, it seems like Cena was walking a little funny there. Huh? And Orton with an RKO drops it. Oh, of course. I don't know why Randy jumped for a tag afterwards, but Triple H has said, nope. Nah, I'm not doing this. Not tonight. You're on your own. Well. D Damien Sandow and John Cena just got the odds pushed a little more in their favor. The fans are chanting for Cena. It's Damien Sandow and Orton in the ring. The SmackDown main event scene is uh, its a hell of a sight, honestly. There are some incredible stars competing at the top of SmackDown. Ooh. Uppercut takes down Damian Sandow. A scoop slam there by Damian Sandow and a knee drop on top. Bulldog takes down Damien. So far he's been dominating this match, but you gotta assume he'll need to tag his partner sooner or later. Orton's definitely got an uphill battle to fight now. I tell you, the guy's been just on fire as of late. He's taking out Randy Orton. I mean, sorry, no, he's not taking out himself. I mean, maybe in the back. I don't know what he does in his own time. But he's taking out John Cena. He's taking out Triple H. He's taking out uh, Damien Sandow. And the fans really strongly one way or another for Cena. Now they want Cena. I feel like I've just never heard these chants before. <laughs> it's so weird. I, to be fair, I didn't use Cena the first time I did 2K14. And uh, he hasn't really been used too much this season either so far. So I guess I just, I'm just not used to that. Boy, they put some real, like, genuine sounding chants in for him, though. Um, fight on the outside here. But yeah, as I said before, uh, you know, Randy Orton, he's crossed all three of these guys quite a bit in the recent week. Obviously, he only attacked Cena the once, but... Um, oh my god! Jesus! Randy Orton. One of the biggest arcades I've ever seen, and... Oh... Damien Sandow did kick out, credit where due. And Randy just kind of stood there, <laughs> like he just is in disbelief. Stun gun. Sandow would be wise to tag Cena in right now. Cena is calling for it, and Sandow said no. I guess that's not really a surprise. Sandow's own hubris could cost him this match big time. What the right word? What does that even mean? Where did I learn that from? <laughs> Just said that and went, the hell did I just say? Uh, 
Excessive pride of self-confidence. Oh, that, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, Damien Sandow's hubris could be his downfall. That is absolutely correct. The fuck did I get that one from? <laughs> so physical. Takes down Damien Sandow. Obviously, the longer Sandow goes this matchup, though, the more softened up he's going to be for two days' time in a triple threat against two of the biggest stars ever. Olympic slam! Oh boy, is he slamming him. Damien Sand. Oh. Poke to the eyes of Randy Orton. That should be a disqualification. Well, I'll tell you, our refs don't give a damn about nothing. <laughs> they do not care. And again. Two blatant eye rakes. No respect for the rules, this referee. Not Sandow. Sandow's, you know, he's just, just do what you might as well do. The referee doesn't care anyway. The knee to the head of Sandow there. These two really going back and forth. This is definitely one of Sandow's best showings in a long old while. Uh, kick out once again. Randy looked like he was charging in for another RKO. That would be, I believe, the third RKO he's hit in this match. Cover attempt there on Sandow for the roll up, and that's enough. And as I said before, Sandow's hubris is downfall there. The guy would not tag in John Cena. Cena's like, why? Why would you not tag me in? It's another loss for John Cena, and it's not even his fault. It's a win for Triple H, and the guy wasn't even here. Well, Randy Orton pins the World Heavyweight Champion once again ahead of Money in the Bank. Sandow's starting to look a little bit like Christian circa 2011, if you know what I mean. Randy Orton is unstoppable right now. He is the odds-on favorite to win in that triple threat match. I have no idea how Sandow plans to escape with the championship intact. But somehow, some way, he's got to find a way this Sunday at Money in the Bank. Will he be able to? I don't know. Only time will tell. Anyway, I'll thank you all for watching tonight's episode of SmackDown, and I will see you tomorrow night on Superstars, where we'll find out if Ric Flair will earn his spot as a SmackDown superstar.